acquires most who requires nothing but commands respect. Erasmus, the education of a Christian prince. Hello again. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. At the beginning of chapter 43, the narrator reminds us that Don Quixote's insanity is limited to the matter of chivalry. Otherwise, he is a very wise person and he proved capable of clear and unimpeded understanding. This makes for the fundamental contradiction of hypocrisy in Don Quixote's character, such that at every step his actions discredited his judgment and his judgment discredited his actions. Only at this point in the novel do we understand Don Quixote's insane hypocrisy is the essential problem of politics and ruling. How can a ruler ever make her actions coincide with her philosophy? How can a ruler maintain her principles in the face of so many conflicts of interest? Now comes the second round of advice from Don Quixote. According to the narrator, Sancho listens to Don Quixote's advice with great interest. The narrator's simile is strange and once again relates politics to gender. Like someone who thought to remember them and consult them when bringing her government to a successful delivery. Now Don Quixote's mode of advice becomes personal. He tells Sancho how you ought to govern your person and your household. Note the irony here, for Don Quixote has been inept at caring for his own person and at running his own household ever since chapter one of part one. This second round of advice is ironic because Don Quixote criticizes his own cast. Trim your fingernails, for example, refers to the Hidalgo cast's tendency to keep long fingernails as a display of their disdain for manual labor. Did you know? In the early modern period, insanity was not yet considered a disease or condition in need of medical attention. A madman might be viewed as a source of important natural, social, or even divine information. Don Quixote's second point is also subversively anti-imperial, recalling the anti-Habsburg tone of chapter 8. Don Quixote tells Sancho to dress well because this will reflect a well-measured personality. And who is the classical example of a negligent dresser? One of history's great tyrants, Julius Caesar. Here, Don Quixote echoes Cicero, antiquity's greatest Republican political philosopher. Don Quixote then turns to the care and composition of Sancho's retinue and offers an innovative piece of advice. If you have to clothe six pages, clothe three and then clothe three beggars, and thus you will have sufficient pages for both heaven and earth. This new mode of regalia is a modern version of St. Martin giving half his cloak to a beggar. So the first three instances of advice in this chapter emphasize humility over displays of power and prestige. Next, Don Quixote tells Sancho to speak slowly, eat moderately, and control his intake of wine. He should avoid stuffing his cheeks with food and belching. Note how beautifully this passage unfolds. When Sancho does not understand the meaning of erutar, to burp, Don Quixote offers a lesson on the organic nature of language, explaining that the vulgar regoldar has been replaced by the erudite Latinism erutar. But the knight's next advice acknowledges that language evolves from below as well as from above. You should not mix into your speeches that crowd of proverbs that you often use. Sancho's response that he cannot control his refrains echoes the ironic relation between table manners and language already present in Don Quixote's lesson on burping. So many jump into my mouth whenever I speak that they struggle with each other to get out. Cervantes appreciated the creative beauty of both high and low registers of discourse. Next, Don Quixote recommends that when mounting a horse, Sancho should use stirrups and sit up straight, unlike the way he rides his gray. Nor should he sleep too much, which indicates laziness. Quixotic Mission. According to Don Quixote's lesson on table banners, what should Sancho avoid? A, forks, B, ham, C, burping. Correct answer, C, burping. 
Two formal pieces of advice remain, the first of which is the most important of all. Once again, Don Quixote underscores the importance of never, ever discussing lineage. It's the one piece of advice repeated in both chapters 42 and 43. This last advice, which I now wish to give you, even though it might not serve to adorn your body, I hope that you will lodge it deep in your memory, for I believe that it will be no less beneficial to you than those that I have given you so far, and it is this. Never, ever enter into disputes over lineages. Finally, the Hidalgo repeats with specificity that the squirely governor should dress appropriately, wearing full-length breeches and never pantaloons. A serious problem arises at the end of Don Quixote's advice. For a second time, he uses the curious term documents. However, our hero emphasizes the contingent, casuistic nature of his advice to Prince Sancho. Time will pass, and depending on your situation, these will be my documents, so long as you take care to keep me informed regarding the state in which you find yourself. So Sancho, will have to report his circumstances back to Don Quixote in order for the knight to continue to guide him in his rule. But this undercuts the whole purpose of Don Quixote giving his squire advice in the first place. Even worse, Sancho cannot remember all of Don Quixote's recommendations. Seeing as I cannot remember any of them, how are they to be of any use to me? And I can no more remember them than I can remember last year's clouds. Sancho proposes that Don Quixote write down his advice. It will be necessary to give them to me in writing, and then, given that I don't know how to read or write, I will give them to my confessor so that he can include them and remind me of them whenever it's necessary. Note how elegantly this anticipates our modern sense of a written formal constitution as well as the division of executive and judiciary powers. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza. Thank you.